In this tutorial, we are going to be talking about testing hypotheses that um, predict that one variable is going to be a significant predictor or a factor that influences the other. Now, um, in that instance, what you should be looking at is possibly doing a regression analysis. And in a regression analysis, what you are looking at is the impact of one variable which is an independent variable and an outcome variable or a dependent variable. So let us use, for example, our binge drinking index. And let's say we had hypothesized that age, gender, and year in school um, were significant predictors of binge drinking um, among colleges. And so we are saying um, possibly um, depending on how young or how, how old the student is, they're more likely to engage in binge drinking. Um, we could hypothesize that, for example, male students are more likely to engage in binge drinking. And we could also hypothesize that the um, students who were at lower levels, like freshmen or sophomore students, which are first and second year students, would be more likely to engage in binge drinking. So younger students, um, younger in age, and also um, that males were more likely to engage in binge drinking. So what we would do then is, is that we would need to run a regression analysis. How do you do a regression analysis? Again, we would go to the Analyze menu and we would select Regression Linear. Now our dependent variable here is the binge drinking index. So we would click on binge drinking index and we would make it the dependent variable. Our independent variable here, as we said before, was age, right? So let us find age. We also said gender. So let us look for gender. That's not age, is it? So age, gender, and also school year. So let us look for school year. So we bring in those three variables. Now we don't have to select any statistics because they're already selected. So what we will do is we'll go ahead and paste. That has been my, um, my practice. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, run from my syntax. Now, this is what my results look like. And as you can see from the results, um, we see where, based on this ANOVA table, you're going to look at this ANOVA table first, right? And this is the one that is actually testing whether or not any of these um, factors were significant predictors of the outcome variable, which was binge drinking. So we see here that there is a significant finding. So the, this, the statistic that we're testing here is a F statistic, and this tells you if the F statistic is significant. So we see that there's an F of 61.18. Um, seeing our P is 0 0.00, which is less than the cutoff of 0 0.05. Um, and so we know that there is a significant finding. Now, when we look at our coefficients table, this is where we would look at. Um, and as you can see, these are the things that we were checking, academic school year, age, and gender. Now, when you look at this standardized beta coefficient, this is the measure of how each or the, 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 um, the relevant important the relative importance of each factor. But before we even look at this, I would suggest that you look at the T-statistic and the SIG. Notice here that only one finding is significant, which is gender. Gender had, and we don't normally read the unstandardized coefficients. We are more likely to read the standardized coefficients. So we see that there's a standardized coefficient of 0.18. The associated T-value is 13.40 
and P is 0 0.00, which is less than 0 0.05. So we would say here that gender is a significant predictor of binge drinking behavior. And since how it was measured was that um, females were one and males were two, we know here that males are more likely to engage in binge drinking behavior. Look, no, though, that neither um, age nor academic school year were actually significant predictors because we don't see any SIG. So here we see that um, gender is a significant predictor of um, binge drinking, right? Um, in terms of um, this table, this model summary, what it does, it is, it's giving you the um, impact of gender and the other out, um, predictor variables on the outcome variable. And when we see here, we read, for example, the adjusted R square, which is 0 0.03, what it is saying is that the impact of this variable, even though it's a significant predictor, the impact is actually not necessarily very strong because um, adjusted R square talks about the amount of variance in the outcome variable that is explained by this predictor. And so um, 0 0.03 is a small number. And so we can look at this and say, based on the adjusted R square, even though gender is a significant predictor, um, there is there is um, there is a small R square, which means that its effect on binge drinking is actually um, a, a low percentage. So it would appear that there are possibly other stronger predictors of binge drinking um, that need to be looked at. So um, there would be some more um, complex discussions to be had about the other predictors. Um, normally, we would say that when we include other predictors, what we're doing is we're controlling for them. So we are actually holding them constant um, in order to see the impact of this one on the outcome, to see the impact on this one on the outcome. But what we see here is pretty much that gender is the most important predictor. Um, since you are undergraduate students, I won't necessarily go too deeply into the um, second and third predictors, especially since they are um, not significant. But what should be noted here is that gender is a significant predictor even after holding age and academic school year constant. So that is the end of a very simplified tutorial of regression analysis.